Hello friends, welcome to our channel The Dental Educators. Today we will be discussing about the permanent maxillary central incisors. So in this lecture we will be only focusing about the specific points which are very helpful and useful for us to identify the permanent maxillary central incisors from different aspects that is the mesial distal labial lingual incisal aspect in particular. In addition to that we will be discussing the specific points which could be beneficial for your exam purpose as well and help you to identify and even to write some identification points in your different examinations. So, production about the permanent maxillary central incisors, we already know that they are centered in the maxilla on either side of the midline. So we have one right maxillary central incisor and the other one is the upper left maxillary central incisor. Both of these central incisors are in contact with each other and they share a mesial surface with each other. This is a distinct feature which you see that the tooth sharing only the mesial surface from the tooth on the corresponding side. This is only seen for the maxillary central incisors and the mandibular central. Looking at the tooth numbering systems, starting with the first one that is the universal numbering system. What we see in the universal numbering system, we start to count the tooth from the upper right maxillary third molar and we count it as number one, number two for the second molar, number three for the first molar, number four for the second premolar, number five for first premolar, number six for canine, number seven for lateral incisor and number eight for the upper right central incisor and number nine for the upper left maxillary central incisor. So, we say upper right is tooth number 8 and upper left is tooth number 9 as per the universal numbering system. Looking at the second tooth numbering system that is the palmar notation system, what we drew, we draw up a midline in the center for the upper right or for the upper left. After drawing a midline, we draw a line on the upper right hand side to divide it into upper cord, upper arch and for the upper left we draw up a simple L to show that it's for the upper left hand side. After drawing up the quadrant shape that is for the upper right in the quadrant for the maxillary central incisor as we will count it from the midline we will mention it as tooth number one. Again for the other side, that is for the left hand side, we will draw up the quadrant shape like an L shape. Then again counting from the midline, the maxillary central incisor will be counted at tooth number 1. So we can see here, for both, for upper right maxillary central incisor, we will draw up a symbol which is horizontally flipped L and then we will write as tooth number one, as counting from midline, the maxillary central incisor is the first tooth. Whereas for the upper left hand side, we will just draw an L shape. And then again counting the tooth from the midline, the maxillary central incisor is the first tooth for the upper left quadrant. So we write it as tooth number one. Now finally, as per the third numbering system, which is the FTI numbering system, what do we do? We divide the maxillary arch into two halves. The first half is basically referred as the quadrant number one. Whereas if we talk about the other half, that is the second half, it's referred as the quadrant number two. So for the upper right hand side, we say quadrant number one and upper left, we say quadrant number two. So first we will write down the quadrant number that is quadrant number one then counting the tooth from the midline again. The maxillary central incisor of the right hand side is the first tooth so we will mention as as one one whereas for the left hand side we will first mention it as quadrant number two. Now again counting the tooth from the midline the maxillary central incisor is the first tooth for the upper left hand side so we will say it's two one. So always the first digit which we mention, it's the quadrant number. 
that is for the upper right hand side it's quadrant number one then whereas for the upper left hand side it's quadrant number two after mentioning the quadrant number we mentioned the tooth number that is the maxillary central incisor from the midline it's the first tooth so we will write it as tooth number one of the upper right quadrant so it will be mentioned as tooth number one one whereas for the second quadrant as it's the first tooth for the second quadrant from the midline so we will mention it as tooth number two one Now when you look at the labial aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor, it tends to show a sharp mesial incisal angle, mesial and the incisal, which makes up the mesial incisal angle, sharp mesial incisal angle for both of the upper right and the left maxillary central incisor. In the image as well, if we see evidently, this is the mesial aspect, so this is the mesial incisal angle again for the upper left hand side as well we see the mesio incisal angle so that's a characteristic feature from the labial aspect which you see for the permanent maxillary central incisors distal aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor they tend to show a rounded disto incisal angle and distal aspect is always away from the midline so we can see this is the distal aspect which appears to have a rounded disto incisal angle. So it's clearly evident in the image here as well that this is the distal aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor. If we see the angle between the distal and the incisal edge area, it tends to appear as rounded so we can see it's clearly evident that the distal incisal angle it's quite rounded here now when we see the other features from the labial aspect we see that we have two developmental depressions which are observed on the labial aspect of the maxillary central incisor so these two developmental depressions basically divide the tooth into three parts one two and three these three parts are basically referred as the lobes similarly for the other maxillary central incisor on the left hand side if we observe we again have three lobes and two developmental depressions which are clearly evident so we can see here as well we have two developmental depressions number one number two and then you have three lobes number one number two and number three which you see from the labial aspect now labially if you look at the curvature of the cervical line it's semi-circular towards the apex of the root for both of the upper right and upper left maxillary central incisor it's towards the apex of the root so in the image as well, it's clearly evident if you observe that the curvature of cervical line is towards the apex of the root for the upper right and upper left maxillary central incisors. When you look at the lingual aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisors, so from the lingual view, we can observe that we have a bulging convexity near the cervical line this bulging convexity is known as the cingulum for both of the central incisors upper left and the upper right central incisor that is closer to the cervical line so in the incisors we have a bulging convexity on the lingual aspect which is referred as the cingulum in connection with the Singulum, we have two elevations on the mesial and distal aspect which are referred as the marginal ridges. So we call them as the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge respectively. The marginal ridge which is closer to the midline is referred as the mesial marginal ridge whereas the marginal ridge which is away from the midline is referred as the distal marginal ridge.
So if we see in this image as well, it's clearly evident that we have two marginal ridges. The one which is closer to the midline is referred as the mesial marginal ridge and the other marginal ridge which is away from the midline is referred as the distal marginal ridge. If you look at the lingual aspect furthermore, between the two marginal ridges and the cingulum, you have a concavity which is referred as the lingual fossa. This concavity is a linear depression which is observed on the lingual aspect. So you can see below the cingulum and between the marginal ridges, you have a shallow concavity for each of the maxillary central incisor. So when you observe the permanent maxillary central incisor from the mesial aspect, it appears to be in a wet shape or you can say a triangular shape, whereas the base of the triangle is towards the cervical line that is closer to the cervical line and the apex of the triangle is towards the incisal ridge. When you look at the curvature of the cervical line from the mesial aspect, it curves noticeable degree towards the incisal edge which is only a distinct feature you see on the mesial and distal aspect for the cervical line. To that when you look at the distal aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor you see that it appears to be thicker from the incisal third area. Why do we see it in thicker in the incisal third area? Because the maxillary central incisors tend to have a distolingual twist. The distolingual twist is there in the permanent maxillary central incisor so that they can follow the U-shaped pattern of the maxillary arch. When you look at the curvature of the cervical line from the distal aspect, it's quite same, that is, it's convergence it's towards the incisal ridge area. But the degree of the cervical line curvature, it's quite less in comparison to the mesial aspect. Incisally, when you see the maxillary central incisor, it appears to be relatively broad and flat in the incisal ridge area. So it's clearly evident in the video as well, it's quite broad and flat in the incisal ridge area. Whereas if area on the labial aspect, it's quite convex in shape. When you look at the lingual portion of the maxillary central incisor from the incisal aspect, we see that the maxillary central incisor tends to taper towards the cingulum which is placed on the lingual aspect of the incisors. The lingual aspect for the upper right and upper left maxillary central incisor, we can see that the cingulum for both of them is off-center distally for the upper left and upper right maxillary central incisor. So it's clearly evident. So you can see here in the video and in the images that it's usually off-center towards the distal The outline of the permanent maxillary central incisor it somehow appears to be triangular in shape. Why? Because the labial aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor is flat and broad whereas it converges towards the cingulum on the lingual aspect. Therefore, it appears to be quite triangular in outline from the incisal when we look at the dimensions of the maxillary central incisor, it tend to be wider mesiodistally, whereas it's less in dimension in facio-lingually, or you can call it as labiolingually as well. Okay, so the mesiodistal dimension for the permanent maxillary central incisors is more than the facio-lingual or labiolingual dimension. So that's all the important points which we observe in the permanent maxillary central incisors. If you have any questions or queries, you can write it down in the comment box and will be answered pretty quickly. Thank you.